Hey everyone, and welcome to Hemp Processing and Technology. Today, we'll be going over nighttime lighting options for your grow space. So this is an issue that comes up often and sometimes unexpectedly. Let's say you have a grow space, but due to work, obligations, or unforeseen circumstances, you miss the daylight cycle, but still need to access your plants for maintenance. So now what? Well, if your plants are in the vegetative stage, that isn't going to be an issue as you can just turn the lights on without harming the plants. But in the flowering stage, this becomes an issue because using a light during the night cycle at this point could harm your plants in multiple ways. From the plants reverting back to the vegetative stage to female plants turning into hermaphrodites. There is a way to mitigate this risk though, and that's by utilizing a faint green light. Plants are able to absorb red and blue light wavelengths, but they reflect green light wavelengths, which is also the reason why plants appear green to us. So because they don't see green nearly as well as red and blue, a small amount of green light won't trigger the plant into thinking that it's the light cycle again. As you can see here, I have a PAR meter that measures the amount of usable light a plant will receive, and when switching between a 10 watt blue LED bulb and a 10 watt green LED bulb, you can see that the green light registers significantly less on the PAR meter, even though it's just as intense as the blue. And this is less than an inch away from the light source. When used a couple feet away, the green light will barely even register at all on the PAR meter. Note that barely registers still means that a little bit is registering. So don't use a concentrated, intense green light. For example, if you're using a green hunting flashlight, which is a popular product available to buy pretty much everywhere because deer can't see red or green lights that well, be sure to scale it out as far as possible so that the light isn't focused and super bright on the plants. In fact, where possible, I'd recommend a green LED light bulb instead so that the light is even softer just to be safe. Remember, the goal here is to not disturb the night cycle of the plant, so you want to use as dim of a light as possible that can still get the job done. Finally, while ideally you'd want to get a light source that has the exact tint of green that your plants reflect for the best results, since that can't be done with off-the-shelf lighting solutions, a typical solid green LED light source is good enough. And if you have one that can be color adjusted, just choose the green color that closest matches your plant color. I've used green lights a few times here and there when needed and never noticed a negative effect on my plants. But I don't recommend relying on this method as a daily routine due to the possible risks. If it's a scheduling issue, you're better off changing the light schedule to fit your personal schedule than to risk harming your plants by relying on using a green light often to work on the plants in the dark. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch, available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.